Now, let me move on to Newton's laws. So Newton, very famous scientist, you know, alongside Einstein, they're considered to be the two greats in physics. And Newton came up with these three beautiful laws. These three laws that we still use today. First of all, before I get into that, there's a definition of a force. Um, what is a force? Um, we'll get a more technical definition later in this lesson, but basically you have an understanding of what a force is. A force is any time, you know, you feel a push or a pull. So if someone pushes me, I can feel a force. If I feel the wind in my face, that's a force. So we all have a certain understanding of what a force is. So we'll just leave it there. There are forces out there. We'll have a better definition for what a force is later on. We're going to call force F. So forces exist. Right, let me go through Newton's three laws. His first law, Newton's law number one. It says, a body will remain at rest or continue to move at a steady speed in a straight line unless acted on by force. That's a very powerful law. You know, first of all, what's he saying? He's saying, well, if there's a body there, there's a mass M, and it's just sitting there, well, it's going to sit there forever and ever and ever, unless a force acts on it. Yeah, that's not, nothing special about that. So a mass sitting at rest, minding its own business, and nothing goes near it, no forces, it's going to stay there forever and ever and ever. It'll remain at rest, unless a force comes along, a force could me, could be me giving it a kick. I give it a kick, it starts moving. So that's, that makes sense. The next part of that first law was a huge insight. You know, we think on the earth, we thought for hundreds of years, that if you want to keep things moving, they need some kind of engine inside them, some kind of force inside them to keep them moving. Newton said no. So Newton thought about it like this. Uh, Newton took a duster, let's say, or a calculator. He didn't have a calculator, of course, in those days. And he pushed it along the surface. And it eventually stopped. And it stopped because of friction, primarily friction. And he said, well, what happens if I reduce friction? So he reduced friction by polishing the table. And he gave that calculator exactly the same force, and this time it went further. And then he thought further about that. Well, what about a puck in ice hockey? And you're on the ice, and you just give that ice puck a push, the same push as I was giving that calculator. And it's on the ice. Now it keeps going and going and going and going. Eventually it will stop, because even though ice is pretty smooth, there is still some friction there. So Newton said, well, hang on. What happens if I'm out in space? There is my object. And I give that object a throw. I just give it a push. So I throw it with a certain velocity. Let's say I throw it at five meters per second. I'm out in space. I'm away from everything else. Well, Newton said, that object will keep going at five meters per second forever and ever and ever in a straight line. Now, that was a huge insight. So in other words, you don't need forces to keep things moving. They will naturally keep on moving themselves. The reason we thought you needed forces to keep things moving was because we live on the earth and there's forces everywhere. There's friction, there's air resistance, there's gravity. So therefore we thought, <clears throat> we thought that you need something to keep something moving. Well, you don't. An object will keep moving by itself unless a force acts on it. If that's out in space, away from everything else, it will move at five meters per second forever and ever and ever in a straight line. Uh, what will make a change? If a force comes along. If I come along and I give it a push, it'll go faster. If I push it from the other side, it'll go slower. Or I might change its direction. In other words, if a force comes along, a force will change its speed. Or... Better than that, it will change its momentum. Remember what momentum is? Momentum is mass by velocity, so it will change its momentum. 
So anyway, that's Newton's first law. Let me look at the definition again. Now that I've explained it, it might make a little bit more sense <coughs> when I read the definition. So it says, a body will remain at rest, no Nobel Prize for saying that, or continue to move at a steady speed in a straight line unless it's acted on by force. That's his big insight. But if you leave things alone, they'll keep on doing what they were already doing. If they're moving at five meters per second, they'll continue to move at five meters per second forever and ever and ever. That's Newton, Newton's law number one. Newton's law number two. And for Newton, Newton's law number two. I'll write it down like that. Well, what do forces do to objects? So if a force comes along, what is a force? It could be the wind, it could be me giving it a kick, I don't know what it is. It could be gravity, it could be electrical, it could be nuclear, I don't know. So a force comes along, what does it do to it? Well, let's say, let's read what Newton said. Newton said in the second law that the rate of change Remember I talked about rate of change before? That's over time. It's how quickly the change takes place. The rate of change in the momentum is directly proportional to the size of the force acting on it. So what's he saying? He's saying that the force... What does the force do? If a force acts on that object, here's a force represented by a vector, an arrow, could be a push. It changes its momentum. He said the force is directly proportional to the rate of change in momentum. The change in momentum. When we talk about rate of change, we're talking about how quickly that takes place. I'm going to divide that by the time. So there it is moving along at 5 meters per second, a force acts behind it, what's going to happen? Its speed is going to increase, let's say, to 10 meters per second. So its momentum has changed. If that momentum changes very quickly, you're talking about a very big force. The force is directly proportional to the change in momentum divided by the time. Well, what's my formula for momentum? Momentum is Mass by velocity. But you know, you're going to be talking about two velocities here. You're going to be talking about the velocity you had before the force acted, u. And then after the force acts, it's going to change, let's say, to v. That's the initial velocity. That's the final velocity. So what's the change in momentum? The change in momentum will be the final velocity. What's... Uh, What's, moment, what's the final momentum? The final momentum is mv. So the change in momentum is mv minus the initial momentum. The initial momentum is its mass by u, mu, divided by the time. That's a mathematical way of describing Newton's second law. Forces, what do forces do? They change the momentum of bodies. So F is directly proportional to the change in momentum, mv minus mu divided by t. Well, let me continue with that. Let me uh, do a bit of work on the top. Let me factorize out the m. So it's m times v minus u divided by t. See that v minus u divided by t? That looks familiar, doesn't it, from lesson one, where I said the acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the time. So that v minus u divided by t, that is the acceleration. So now we can say that f is directly proportional to the mass by the acceleration. It's another way of saying it, isn't it? What do forces do? Forces accelerate bodies. So there, there's that body traveling along, minding its own business at five meters per second, a force comes, and what does that force do? It's going to change its speed. And changing speed means it's accelerating it. So forces, 
cause bodies to accelerate. Now, you know in physics, when something is directly proportional to something, you can make it equal by putting in a constant of proportionality. So I can say that f is equal to, let me call that constant k, k m a. Now, what is the value of k? Well, you know what? If they have mass in kilograms, and acceleration in meters per second squared, then the units of force are going to be called newtons. And if that's the case, we can call k1. So if we use all the correct units, in other words, the units were set up to make sure that k was equal to 1, I'm going to have k is equal to 1, and now my formula becomes F is equal to ma. Force is mass by acceleration. That's one of the most famous laws in the, on the planet. F is equal to ma. We use it for engineering. We use it to get the astronauts to the moon. So that is a very, very famous equation. F is equal to ma. What are the units for force? Well, the, the units for mass and acceleration, aren't they? What are the units for mass? Kilograms. Acceleration. Meters per second squared. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Kilograms, meters per second squared. Well, they've come along and they said, let's call that after a famous scientist. Let's call that after the great man himself, Newton. So we'll call that Newtons. So the units of force are Newtons. So Newton's second law, you have the definition, change in momentum over time. You see what I did there? That's kind of a little proof. And you need to know that proof for the leaving cert. They'll sometimes ask you to derive Newton's second law. And that's how you derive it. You derive it from its definition all the way down to get F is equal to ma. So very famous formula, F is equal to ma. So, what's Newton's first law? If it's at rest, minding its own business, it'll stay at rest forever and ever. If it's moving in a straight line at a certain speed, it'll do that also forever and ever and ever, as long as no forces go near it. What's the second law? Well, what happens to it if a force does act on it? If a force does act on it, it accelerates it. It changes its speed. According to the formula, F is equal to ma. Now, there's one more law, which kind of everybody's heard about before. It's called Newton's third law. It's action-reaction. And let's go to the definition of Newton's third law. So the definition is on um, page 19. So it says, when bodies interact, they exert equal but opposite forces on each other. To every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So I think that's the way you kind of know it. We call Newton free, if you like. We call it the action-reaction law. Action, reaction. You know, I suppose what it's telling me is force can't act by itself. You know, I can't push against nothing. You know, if I push, if I'm pushing a car down the road, I can feel a force, that car is pushing me back with an equal but opposite force. So forces can't exist on their own. They always exist in pairs. So if someone hits me on my nose with their fist, well actually my nose will hit their fist back with exactly the same force. Now obviously your nose is a little bit more sensitive than a fist, but the point, the point is still there, that I will hit that person back with exactly the same force as they hit me. You know, so basically every force has an equal and opposite force acting on it. You know, basically you can't have a force acting on its own. You can't touch without being touched. So everything exists in pairs. So that's what Newton's third law is about. So know, know the definition for that, the action-reaction force. <laughs>